Hey guys, welcome back. Today we're out the range testing a handgun that I am considering carrying. As you guys probably know, if you follow the channel, I've adopted the VP9 as my daily carry handgun. I've put a lot of ammunition through the VP9, and this fall, I promise you guys, I'll give you all my thoughts for what we'd normally call a full review here very shortly, you know, probably about the time the snow flies. I've been carrying the gun for a very long time, and before I give you those thoughts, I want to make sure I've completely wrung the gun out so I can tell you what I like and I don't like about it. And I do have things I don't like about it, but I'm still carrying it. But as a backup, I like to carry another handgun. Sometimes I want a smaller handgun that I can carry around that's you know, comfortable in hot summer days like today, where if I'm just wearing shorts and a light t-shirt, I don't want a big old VP9, which I carry appendix style, poking out, you know, showing the whole world that I have a gun on. Sometimes I want to be a little bit more discreet, or perhaps I want a little more comfort if I want to be out and be active all day long, running around, bending over, stuff like that. In those instances, I've been using the Glock 43. The Glock 43 is the little mini 9mm that Glock recently announced, and I've been trying to fall in love with the gun. Reliability, spot on. The gun works just fine. However, I can't shoot the gun accurately, not nearly as accurately as I can my VP9 or even my Glock 19. As a matter of fact, my Glock 42, the smaller 380 version of that, which I carried as a little backup gun before the 43 came onto the market, I can shoot tiny little groups right in the X-ring with that pistol as well. But for whatever reason, the 43 does not work for me as well as I would like it to. I've changed the sights, I've put a ghost trigger in it, I've put talon grips on it, and I still just can't get the gun under control. It's not giving me that comfort level that I like to have in a carry gun. So I've been looking for other options. Also, because I carry appendix, I'm kind of going against what I normally say I prefer. In that case, I'm talking about manual safeties on striker-fired handguns. I am carrying the Walther CCP right now, and this is the handgun that I'm talking about, appendix style. I'm carrying it in a custom contact concealment Kydex holster. Bruce over at Contact Concealment was kind enough to make this for me when I told him I was looking at going to the CCP. There's no rake on it. It's intended to be carried perfectly vertical. Works great for inside the waistband carry. You'll notice that the gun fits very nicely in there. It doesn't poke me in the nether regions. It's a very comfortable place to carry the gun. Because it has a manual safety, I don't have to worry about shooting myself in the burrito when I'm quickly reholstering. Now you should go slow into the holster, right? That's what we always were, were taught. But one thing that you have to be very careful of when you're reholstering a striker fired pistol, when you draw the gun and present it, when you go back, you want to make sure that your fingers off the trigger, you pull your garment up, you look and make sure there's nothing there and carefully reinsert the gun into your holster. One screw up there will put a round right where you're not going to survive the hit. And there's a big old artery that runs down both sides of your legs. You hit that artery, 911 isn't going to save you. The manual safety allows me to go ahead and put the gun on safe and then carefully reholster it, giving me that extra tier of security. I was also considering perhaps going to a double action auto again, as you guys know. If, I, uh, if you follow the channel, you'll recently know I had a, a long conversation with a gentleman by the name of Byron who owns a training company, and he was talking to me as to why he likes a double action auto because he, like me, carries appendix style. This manual safety gives me the striker fired pistol that I want, the trigger that I want, but also gives me uh, the ability to make the gun safe when I'm reholstering, which is typically when you're going to shoot yourself in the jimmy unintentionally. What we're out here doing today is testing the gun. Now I've put about 300 rounds to the gun so far and I have tested it with my carry ammunition, but I want to make sure that I'm 100% comfortable with reliability. Here I have some 115 grain ball ammunition from Freedom Munitions. Good stuff. This is the first time you guys see me shooting this stuff. I've seen other people shooting it. And I wanted to give it a try. And I also have some S&B ammo here. This stuff I use quite frequently on the channel. I picked this stuff up from Lucky Gunner. This stuff I get directly from Freedom Munitions. So my goal is, is to put 1,000 rounds through this gun in the next couple of days. I'm about 300 rounds in today. I'm going to come out here and just ring this handgun out continue to shoot it and shoot it and shoot it and make sure that it has 100% function before I'm comfortable saying I'm going to carry the thing as my, my backup handgun or my primary handgun when I don't want to carry a bigger handgun. So let's do some shooting. And I also want to show you some things about the CCP and another handgun it's very similar to. Let's start doing some shooting. All right, you see that little spinning wheel, pinwheel target out there? Once you shoot one of those targets off, it sets the whole thing into motion, causes it to spin in a circle making it ever more challenging to hit the target. Let's see if I can knock them all off there.
Ah. <laughs> I made it. No rounds to spare. It took me eight rounds to do it, but I finally shot them all off. Again, about 15 yards, something like that. Not too bad. Little six inch plates. Very shootable little handgun. I tell you what, let's see if we can knock down. I got eight more rounds here. Step over here and see how I do on the plate rack. And let's go out to the big target there. Yeah, this thing shoots really, really well in my hands, and that's why I'm falling in love with the thing. So far, we've had no malfunctions with the handgun using the S&B ammunition. I'm shooting at a plate rack that's about 15 yards away. The plates themselves are about 8 inches. It's a little bit further than what I normally train for self-defense type stuff, but I'm trying to get used to the gun and force myself to shoot more accurately. When I draw the pistol, I'll bring it up, and you'll notice when I bring it up, my thumb will come up, and I will sweep the safety off. So the gun comes up, safety comes off, and then the gun goes out. Now here's where I'm having a problem with this gun, just like with my VP9. It seems like everybody these days wants to put the slide stop in the wrong place. In my case, I'm always touching that slide stop. I'm getting not false locks, but the gun rarely locks open for me. I normally carry a, a, shoot a handgun with my thumbs forward like this, but in doing that, my thumb is touching this under recoil and keeping the slide from locking open. I've gotten around it with my VP9. I've yet to learn how to do it with this in a comfortable way. The only way I can shoot the gun without having it happen is to tuck my thumb down, which then screws up my grip. I don't like how I'm holding the gun, so I'm going to have to work on that. But anyway, let's see how little gun shoots. Now, another thing I like about this handgun is that it has eight round magazines. My Glock 43 only holds six rounds, so nine rounds with one in the chamber. Ergonomics on this thing are spectacular. That's what really drew me to the handgun. Yeah, extremely accurate. I mean, I can hit pretty much anything I aim at with this little guy. So, eight rounds, good deal. The sights are pretty minimalistic. Got a three dot sight arrangement. They are not night sights. I do plan on putting night sights on it when I can find some. Other than that, the operation of the gun is very unique. I shouldn't say it's very unique, it's unique. There have been other designs in the past that have used this particular method of operation, the most notable of which was built by h &K. Let's take a look at that little pistol. Wow, that is one shootable handgun. This, guys, is the HKP7. This is not the M8. This is the earlier version. It has a heel release here on the magazine. Push the button on the bottom, drops the magazine out. It does not have the polymer heat shield up here, and we'll talk about why that's important here in a second. But this is the HK squeeze cocker. To cock the weapon, you simply squeeze this lever right here, and it will draw the striker to the rear. It performs another function. By squeezing it, if I put a fresh magazine into the gun, I squeeze this lever and it drops the slide chambers around, makes the gun ready. You'll notice that the striker is to the rear in the firing position. If I release my grip on the gun, it decocks the gun, making it safe. So it's very fast into action. There are no slide stops for your, your finger to get snagged up on or cause false locks or no locks at all. The gun's very fast and easy to use. It holds eight rounds, but what makes this gun unique is the fact that it's not your typical blowback operation. As a matter of fact, simply push a button, take the gun apart, all you have to do is push this button, and you'll see how the gun works. See that gas piston? That's a piston that's used to delay the slide from opening. So it's holding the slide closed at the moment of firing. There's a hole right in front of the chamber. When the bullet passes that hole, it taps gas off and it pushes the slide closed when the bullet leaves the barrel, then the gas pressures drop off and the recoil allows the slide to move rearward. So it's a gas delayed blowback system, the exact same system that Walther is now using on the new CCP. It makes for a very easy gun to use in terms of 
recoil management, and also the springs tend to be a little bit easier to operate for those that have weak hands. So let's take another look at that CCP. Yeah, I think I got one left. <laughs> How many rounds I got left? And I got three rounds left. This little guy shoots really, really well if I do my part. All right, so the one thing I don't like about the CCP is its disassembly method. It can be a nightmare. First of all, let's take a look at the P7, which it shares some lineage with. The P7 is a very simple handgun to field strip. Simply make sure that the gun's empty. Of course, there's no magazine in the gun. Push the takedown button on the side of the P7, draw the slide slightly to the rear and lift up, and the whole gun just comes apart like that, okay? Fixed barrel, spring, slide with its gas piston. Let's set the P7 aside, and now take a look at the CCP. The CCP ships with this handy little polymer tool. Without this tool, you will probably find yourself using four-letter words you've never used before in your life, and you may wind up losing small parts, like a spring. Ask me how I know. I spent 15 minutes looking for a spring because I dared to try to take this apart with a flathead screwdriver. Okay, make sure that the CCP is empty. There's no magazine in the gun. There's a little tiny metal tab. I'm going to use the tip of the takedown tool to push up on that tab and push in on the rear assembly. And that will allow me to draw the slide off the gun. Now be very careful. These parts can come out and go sailing. All right, once you do that, there's your recoil spring and your gas piston system. Now this gun has collectively about 500 rounds through it today, about, what, 300 rounds yesterday. So we're about 800 rounds into the gun. I haven't cleaned it. I have sprayed a little bit of lubricant in there. You can see the gun's pretty dirty, but we're having no issues with ammunition that's above, should I say, you know, light factory loads for target use. The light 115 grain ball rounds like Winchester White Box, not quite enough to cycle the action. The slightly hotter stuff, the SMB, the ZQI, the Freedom Munitions 124 grains, 100% function, no problems with the gun. All right, so to put it back together, slide your spring over the barrel. Now this becomes a little bit challenging you have to line your gas piston up with the gas piston hole that's in the end just underneath the barrel itself. If the piston doesn't line up, you can see the piston moves around quite a bit. You're going to wind up, again, cussing and making funny noises. All right, so I'm going to try to line it up as best I can here. There you go. Okay. Now, once you get it to that point, you get the gas piston in, to slide, put the slide at about this position. Get your tool and push in on the takedown section. Again, <laughs> they say it gets easier with practice. Okay, there, it's back together. So, moral to that story, don't lose this tool. If you think you're inclined to lose this tool, contact Walther and order a whole bunch of them and put them away. You can get it apart with a screwdriver, but you may find yourself running around with a flashlight on the floor looking for tiny parts that go sailing, which is what happened to me. So aside from that, that's really the only negative about the handgun I found so far. All right, guys, what I'm gonna do is I have a thermal camera over here to my left that's gonna be recording the gun as it's firing. You're gonna be able to see the heat build up on this side of the gun. It may take a few magazines for it to really start to register.
All right, let's grab one more uh, set of magazines here really quick. Here we go with the second mag, or I'm sorry, here we go with the third magazine. And the fourth magazine. It's getting a little bit warm, not too bad. Let's try a couple more mags. All right. I can tell you right now, that's very warm. On the underside, right there, it's uncomfortable to hold my finger there for more than three seconds. So that's how quickly that little guy heats up. That sucker's getting warm. There's 160 degrees right there where your finger touches. That's uncomfortably hot, okay? And that's all because of the gas system. If you come back here to the rear of the gun, yeah, it's just ambient temperature. It's about 80 degrees out here today. The grip is fine. Yeah, 99 degrees, 97 degrees. But right there where that gas piston system is, holy cow, it gets warm. 163, 100, yeah, right, right in the 160 degree range, man. All right, guys, so we've put a little over 500 rounds through it this afternoon. I put 300 rounds through it uh, yesterday at the indoor range. If you follow me on Instagram, I was talking to you guys about putting about 1,000 rounds through it in two days. Uh, tomorrow, I'm gonna put some more ammunition through it, but right now, I'm very comfortable with the reliability and the function of the handgun. It's an extremely shootable handgun, and I will be carrying it, and I think at this point, the Glock 43 has been officially retired. I just simply can't shoot the gun like I can this one. I also like the fact that this handgun has two more rounds, but still roughly about the same size as the Glock 43. It's more ergonomic, it's more shootable. I like the sights that are on it, although I would like to have night sights, and it holds two more rounds. I simply can't beat it. Plus, the trigger is really good. Now, I know a lot of you guys have asked me already, how's the trigger on the gun? Some people have said it's squeaky or gritty or whatever. I'm just not feeling it. The trigger on this gun is long, it's creepy, but it breaks really clean. And it's one of those few guns that when I look over the sights as I'm aiming the pistol, I can actually see it break cleanly and the front sight doesn't move. The reset on the handgun, the trigger, this is what the reset looks like. So it's a very long reset. So you're not gonna shoot super fast. This isn't gonna be a very good handgun for competition shooting, but the trigger is nice for a defensive handgun trigger and you can't argue with the accuracy. I can shoot this little gun. I was hitting steel plates at 100 yards with it and this is a compact pistol. It's a very nice little gun to shoot. Magazine release is right where I like it, although it is different than my VP9, so the manual of arms will be slightly different. And it also has this manual safety, which again, I'm giving a try. I typically don't like them, giving them a try because I do carry the gun appendix style and it gives me just a little bit of extra buffer if I make sure that safety's on when I holster it and as long as I practice taking that safety off when I bring it out, I should be just fine. And it gives me that little extra security measure to prevent myself from accidentally shooting myself in places I don't want to be shot. I will continue to show this gun in future videos. I'll talk about the performance of the gun going forward and how it's going as far as my carry gun, or I should say secondary carry gun. If you guys have any questions about anything you've seen in this video, you can ask those questions on our Facebook page. You can find us on Facebook at facebook.com 
forward slash military arms. Also, please come by and check out Copper Custom. It's our online store. If you want to support the Military Arms channel, the best possible way to do that is swing by Copper Custom. It's coppercustom.com and check out all the products we have. We have some really good products at great prices. Also, if you haven't already, come by and check out the Very Pro Gun website where we've taken all the web's top firearms content creators and brought them under one roof. You can find us all there at full30.com. Again, that's full30.com. Thanks again for watching, everybody. We'll talk to you guys soon.